This is Apple's brand new iPhone 5S. It's the successor to the iPhone 5 and costs £549 to buy SIM free in shops. It's got a fingerprint scanner, an improved camera, a 64 bit processor, and an improved battery life, according to Apple. Let's take a look at its key features. The most notable innovation on the iPhone 5S is its fingerprint scanner. Now this is designed so you don't have to enter usual 4-pin passcode, instead you can just hold down your finger and unlock the screen. So to set up a new fingerprint on the iPhone 5S, you go into Settings, and then you tap on the Passcode and Fingerprint section. Now this is going to ask you to enter your usual numbered passcode. You'll have two passcodes, one your fingerprint and the numbered passcode, just so for that added bit of security. Type that in, and then you can go into Fingerprints, and then you're going to add a new fingerprint. So this is what we're going to do now. So this basically revolves around lifting your, placing your finger on the home button and then lifting it up and then placing it just so the phone can capture as much of your finger as possible. OK, so here we go, we're ready. Now I'm going to turn off the phone and then hopefully by tapping the button, holding it there and we're back in again. So another notable change about the iPhone 5S is its new camera. It's got the same amount of megapixels as the iPhone 5, that's 8 megapixels. But the difference is the pixels are actually larger in size. They're 1.5 microns, and this means they can capture more light. More light means they're better for taking photographs in low light. Let's see how it performed when we took a few test shots. So we took two types of photos, those ones in normal light and those ones in low light. The first one in normal light, well, it was a little bit blurred, but it turned out right on the second shot of me. As you'd expect, the photos in low light performed better when we had a flash. And with the new iPhone 5S, there was a particular reason for this, and that's because it has a second flash bulb. This is meant to color balance the photos in low light. The iPhone 5S also has the ability to capture video in slow motion. So here's a video of George from the office doing the moonwalk. Now you might have heard a bit about octa-core processors with eight cores compared to quad-core processors with four cores. Well, Apple sidestepped that whole debate with the iPhone 5S. It's got a 64-bit processor. Essentially, this means it should be better when running high-end games with 3D graphics, and you shouldn't experience any slowdown in frame rates. The final key feature of the iPhone 5S is that it's meant to offer improved call time. That's a boost from 9 hours with the iPhone 5 to 10 hours with the iPhone 5S. We won't be able to actually tell if this is the case until we get the phone into our test lab though. Aside from the new fingerprint scanner, which I found to be a lot more convenient than I first thought, I don't think there's a, that much difference between the iPhone 5S and the iPhone 5. Maybe if you're a high-end gamer and you like to play a lot of apps with 3D graphics, then it's worth upgrading. Otherwise, I'd hold off, especially if you just upgraded your iPhone 5 to iOS 7. For more information about the iPhone 5S, the iPhone 5C, and the Samsung Galaxy S4, click on the links below.